This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Welcome everyone to the Amherst Historical Commission's public meeting on Thursday, August 4th. Uh, 2022, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12, 2020, this meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jan Marquardt and as chair of the Amos Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken. I'll now take a roll call of commissioners in attendance when you hear me, please unmute yourself, answer, and then put yourself back on mute. Patricia Oth. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Heidi Startup. Present. Rebecca Lockwood. Present. Uh, for anyone listening in, opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period later in the agenda. Okay. First meeting, first thing on the agenda is the presentation by the Amherst Korean Church on their CPA proposal. Do you want to bring them in, Ben? I will do that, yeah. I feel like an impresario. <laughs> yeah, the, conduct the conductor, yeah. The conductor, yes. Hello. Uh, I'm uh, trying to bring uh, C. Kyung into the meeting as a panelist. Meg, are you here to help with this? Recording in progress. Proposal? Okay. Yes, I'm. I'm going to mute, but I'm, as you can see, on vacation, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> Just don't get any mosquito bites. There's a lake. Wow. Very oh nice. <laughs> so welcome, uh, Pastor Song and C. Kyung and, and Meg. Thanks for being able to join us today. Um, I will say I, I met uh, Pastor Song and C. Kyung a few weeks ago at, at the church. I was able, they showed me around and we uh, talked about the needs that they have to preserve the church building. Um, and I, you know, told them about the CPA opportunity, uh, thinking this would be a, a very good project. It's a really important landmark, the building in North Amherst. And so I encouraged uh, Pastor Song and Si Kyung to uh, come to the Historical Commission meeting, uh, th this meeting, the one in August, uh, to have a just a preliminary discussion with the historical commission um, in advance of the application, which is due on September 30th. And so I hope, you know, today is just an opportunity to learn more about the project, to ask questions, and to really help make this application as strong as it can be. So Great. Um, um, yeah. So could we hear what you're planning to request from CPA? Okay. Uh, thank you for having us. On um, behalf of our Zion Korean Church in North Amherst, uh, we want to thank you and wish you warm welcome to our church. And we like to also add, uh, giving us this opportunity to appeal to historical committee of our church's need. And I will be showing images of our structure, uh, both building, uh, main building, as well as uh, Paris Hall, which is, a we use a two addresses, but combine as one, 1193 North Pleasant Street and 1195 North Pleasant Street, but as one. Uh, my name is Si Kyung Park. I'm here with our pastor, In Church Song, and we will help with our presentation, our Janet Keller and Meg Gage from District 
one neighborhood association stirring team. We will present the images of a church's exterior structure, as I have mentioned, and we, you will see with your naked eyes, and I believe a picture is worth a thousand words. And before uh, we start uh, with the image, just briefly uh, share a story. Barbara Jenkins, who had diligently tried to maintain this church for a long time, and despite of her effort, the congregation was down to only a handful. After 184 years, one of the parts of the Amherst community, the North Congregational Church, changed the hands with the diverse but ever-growing Korean churches. We moved in, we moved on July 29, 2012, just spilling it over 10 years ago, we took a residence here. And one of the articles posted on 2010, Ms. Jenkins, we would love to see continue to be a community center. And our church wants to become a community center as well. And a couple of days ago, I learned intriguing a, uh, information about the first pastor of the North Congregational Church. His name was Reverend William Hunt, and he was an anti-slavery advocate. Men, only white people was attending at the church service at that time. And eventually people of color could attend the service set on the balcony. The change happened in his iconic church we are presenting to you right now in here today. In that same spirit, move our congregation. We want to apply changes with the three we knew. First, after 35 years of a serve as a pastor, Lee has retired. Then Pastor Song on February 6th of this year became a lead pastor with a new leadership. Secondly, our church is a Korean immigrant family center in church. And it's, it is necessary to expand to the multi-ethnic church by sharing praying services every Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. and prayer meeting we welcome those who want to join the prayer. This is a new vision. And thirdly, uh, the Stuart Church of the Restoration, making the 200 years in 2026. And we have the responsibility and honor to preserve the cross can stand high to represent God's love for all the people. Please help us with the becoming a community center, church center, and college center, connecting with the region, growing together, and serving the younger generation. Of course, we lack resource and wisdom. However, you have the power to make a decision in our favor to give grants and what he contributes to all the funds for the people of this community. Next, we want to show you the images. And after that, view the pictures. You will see that it has been some uh, progress updated in our church interior down basement, uh, which we created uh, Sunday school classroom and the parish hall, you will see in an image, uh, Pastor Song painted it and fixed the wall. So last, penny, last 10 years, uh, having staying here as a, a church resident in this community, uh, we try as much as we can with the fund is available through our uh, financial offering. Uh, of course, 
one of the things that we like to use, like I say, we like to open our church to community center and center of the church and college center. And then parish hall is uh, right now, I, I'm sure you are all aware of, uh, this is North District Voting Station. So we've been having town, uh, North Samaritan people come here to uh, set up and using as uh, every, every year, twice a year, using for a voting station. So without further ado, after I finish showing the uh, images, I would like to make Gage and Jenna Keller to be part of our team as a share of uh, this presentation. So without further ado, we're gonna show you uh, images we have prepared. And like I said earlier, a picture is worth 8,000 words. And obviously you will be seeing why we could we need to apply this grant. And thank you. And wish us luck. <laughs> thank you. So uh, Ben, can I share the screen? Uh, yes, yeah. Ari. My... Yes, just screen share and then walk us through it. Can you, um, you should be able to press the share screen button at the bottom. It's a green arrow. Yep. Oops. I have to reopen the. Oops. I think we lost him. He said he had to reopen the screen or the yeah, somehow program. he has to sign back in again. Yeah. So Young, you understand that we're not the ones granting the money. We're just advising your application, right? Okay. Okay, great. Oh, sorry, uh, Seek Young, you're actually on mute. Sorry, can't hear you. This is the basement that we, I have talked about, we upgraded, but uh, as that uh, slide go process go forward, I will uh, mention to you how we come and fix this uh, basement to Sunday school uh, classrooms. Wow. Okay, so now we're getting into the things you need to have done. Yes. Roof and gutter, bell tower, exterior, remove storm window. You mean windows, all of them? Yes, because they are all, or I so don't know when was the last them? time that North Congregational Church fixed the window, did anything but uh, its really condition is bad, I need to replace all of them. 
So you would replace the windows with double pane and you wouldn't need storm windows then? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, the entrance stone, oh, the stairs? Yeah. Okay. Um, is there just one or is it a multiple staircase? Yeah, we have a corner. It's some, yeah, it's large, uh, a few large slabs for a stairwell. Your eaves and your gutters are in bad shape. Okay. Whoa, wow. Wow. It's in bad shape. <laughs> Is it leaking inside? Yes. Some yeah. water came into the, our sanctuary, yeah. uh, worship area, and we fixed the just put the little paint on it, but without fixing a basic problem, uh, it's going to be repeat every time it rains. Yeah, you'll get mold. Yes. Okay, the bell tower, that's part yes. of the painting project. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Is the, is the finial on top secure? That we're not sure because nobody can climb up there. <laughs> as we're speaking now, then we're going to get uh, we still have to get a couple more estimate. Uh, we had a one uh, general contractor looked at it and we just couldn't get a, his estimate yet because of his busy schedule, which is understandable, but, oh, right there. That's where all the rain went into the basement. So basement yeah, I've noticed was, that driving by, those are really yeah. odd covers yes. basement. So yeah. it was a mold. And all the walls to the south of our building was all moldy. And we have to do the kind of major job uh, renovating. And mm -hmm. it's not renovated yet, but not the standard of, uh, I don't think that we could have an inspection done, but we did a new, put a new sheetrock and paint and using it as our uh, Sunday school classroom. So. You're also, you can't just paint there. You're gonna to have to put different covers over the window wells so that it doesn't yeah. leak anymore. That's because a whole we found project. out where the uh, rain was going down inside the, uh, the paved uh, area. So mm -hmm. we put a kind of roof over it, above yeah. the window, kind of stop, but this damage has been done there already, so. Yeah, they have better solutions for that. Yeah. This oh, is our entrance of a stone where it's uh, making a gaps. So it's kind of shaky. So yeah. we have to need to uh, uh, fix that entrance stairs. And see the window cells so where Very old. you need know, to yeah. replace windows. This is the parish hall. Yes, yes. And need a gutter and repair, need a repair to roof. So you have slate. Um, I assume those you're just going to replace, repair and replace, not change the roof here. Right. We These need a repairing a lot of areas on the roof. So I don't know, just repairing one spot will, you know, do the job or have to do the whole roof. Well, you that, wouldn't be able to get the same, you wouldn't be able to afford the same materials. Yeah, you should talk yeah. to an expert on this type of roof. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's very, this is very different from a standard roof today. And those last, yes. what, what has it been, 80 to 125 years? But they're no, probably that yeah. far, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's a whole nother project. Uh, that's the problem area as well, uh, because have a drainage problem in the middle. It's kind mm -hmm. of paved really down a little deeper than you see in the naked eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has a drain problem in the whole parking lot area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of causing a problematic. See, the, there's our parking lot right there. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine that drain is plugged if it hasn't been cleaned out lately too. Yes, yes. Bedrock. 
Ben, this isn't the town's responsibility. Um, that's why we were we were wondering. Oh, I probably it is the town's. I just want to make sure it's if it's I if it's on their land. I, we probably have an easement over it anyway. But um, yeah, actually, the pine street side, the sidewalk is uh, <coughs> new, but right now it. Mm -hmm. Those prison side only yeah, this right for the old. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's a, it's town property. Um, okay, so that's one thing they don't have to worry about. Is this the actual tilt or is this the photographer? No, it is a kind of tilt. Oh, okay. Yeah. You may yeah. have to race, race Wait, Does it that. does it really tilt like that? I actually, never, no, this is a station. Uh, Young? Is yeah. yeah. Well, I cannot give you a different answer because it's not, it's not because how pastor song took a picture without is the closest he could get and take a picture and maybe even naked eyes so you look like a little yeah. bit tilted i don't think it's that tilted though i've said it that signal many times and i would have noticed i mean this looks like it's about ready to topple over <laughs> i don't think so. i agree it's not not like that no i mean you can see in this photo that it's it's square on the building. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, that's all the pictures we have prepared for you. Meg, did you have anything to add before we ask for the commission's comments? Sure. Um, I'm uh, delighted to be extremely supportive of this project. Um, just drop something. Oh, well. Uh, I have grandkids running around in the background, but oh, well. Um, we were only recently uh, brought into the process with massive huge thanks to Ben for alerting us. The District One Neighborhood Association had independently been thinking about suggesting that the church apply for CPA funding and we were delighted that they are already ahead of that. Um, and so I think our support will get stronger as we go along and we're just stepping into this. Um, the, I want to point out a few historical things, since this is a historical commission. Uh, the building itself has been approved by the Mass uh, Historical uh, Commission, as re has been recognized by the Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts historical, I don't have the right, the exact branch, but, um, and hmm. nationally, the neighborhood of, of that uh, village center has been recognized as a historic district we're extremely uh, interested in maintaining that. We care a lot about our history and we really think the church is one of the most amazing uh, local historic buildings. I'll add a little bit to what uh, Chi Kyung said. Uh, the building was funded uh, and built in 1826, was funded by a guy named Oliver Dickinson who demanded that none of the pews would be available to black, to African-Americans. And I'm really curious to find out who that Oliver Dickinson was, but as I said, when we get more involved. Um, however, the first pastor of the church, William Hunt, as Chi Gong said, was the founder of the Amherst Anti-Slavery Society. And so the North Amherst Church became a center of anti-slavery activity early in the 19th century. And blacks were, African-Americans were allowed, although they had to sit in the balcony. And then for some reason, older children like teenagers had to sit up there too. I don't I have to learn more about what that was about. Um, <clears throat> we're extremely happy that the church is interested in reaching out to the community and appreciate that. And we would like to help them uh, think that through how that'll happen. Uh, but the, the main interest that we have, and I particularly have, is in the extremely important historical significance of this building. Um, it was uh, people, before this church was built, people had to ride in their buggies three miles to get to church. And then, uh, so it was very important in 1826, which is really early that they built this church. So I hope uh, that we'll, down the the proposal has a ways to go to figure out the costs and exactly what the nature of some of these 
uh, entail, uh, but the proposal, the final proposal isn't due till the end of September. So we have plenty of time to figure it out and engage more people and build more um, interest in protecting this extremely important historical building in Amherst. Thank Janet you. Keller's not able to join us tonight, but I'm doubling for her too. Sure. But we're, we're really, in, we're really, really into this. <laughs> <laughs> Great, it's good that you, they have your support. Um, let me just mention one thing before I open it up to the rest of the commission, and that is because it is a historic building, you can't just change materials and looks. You have to keep it in its original form when you re redo things. So for instance, that slate roof, the windows, you can't just put in modern windows that look different. It's going to add to the cost, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really required by the fact that it's such an old building. So you'll have to talk to contractors in those terms, right? Okay. In terms of restoration as much as remodeling or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and it may be that this grant has to be a multi-year grant where you propose something major, you know, this year and then next year and the next year, because this is way more than any CPA grant can handle in a single year. Okay. So you might think, Meg, you might help them think through okay. you know, how to right. break into pieces. So, and that's been done before. In fact, right there, the community farm, just down the street, from the church did that. They came back to us over what, three years at least for different parts of the house and things that they were doing. And, and so it's, it is possible for CPA to, to continue on like that, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna fund the whole thing anyway. And they wouldn't be able to take such a huge project on at once. Okay, any um, commissioners? Um, Becky, your hands up. Robin, um, you're next. I, I'm glad you pointed out that it is a lot of work to do. Do you have, the end of September isn't that far away, I guess, is my concern. So it, it would seem to me you, you might want to get some folks, some contractors in and look at what is the worst damage that you need to fix now. And can you actually get some estimates um, before the deadline? And then I think the other question is, um, have you made any plans for fundraising to go along with grants? Yes, as I have spoken with the Ben and May Gage, uh, give us some ideas. So, of course, our congregation have been involved with this process. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we will be involved with the offering. Then we do the uh, bazaar, like a food bazaar, any tech sale, I mean, you know, everything, every penny will help. So we're gonna do our power to do the fundraising mm -hmm. much as we can and trying to get work done as a needed basis. And I'm glad that uh, found out about, we could repeat the uh, applying yeah. for grant every year. That's good to know. I thought it was a one time and that's yet, but, that's really hopeful and we, I'm glad for uh, getting that new information. Great. Robin? Yeah. There I am. Um, hi, it was, it's um, a pleasure to have you here and what, uh, what an amazing building for, for preservation purposes we have before us. Um, I wanted to, uh, reiterate what Meg said, the house, uh, the house, the um, church, so, and, and Ben can correct me if I get this wrong, but the church is um, inventoried with the Mass Historic Commission. That means there's a, an inventory form with a little bit of the history. It's, um, it's a little outdated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it could use some updating, the form itself could use some updating, but um, it is part of this national register district. So it's what we would call a contributing property to a national register district, which means that it's also on the national register, which in turn puts it on the state register. Just for clarification purposes, there's no, there's no, uh, the, the Massachusetts inventory form that's in their system is not um, an honorary uh, significance. The, um, the mass At the Massachusetts level, we don't have landmarks. Um, they're all put on the state register through either being on the national register or local historic district, but it is on 
both registers. So that, that makes it a really um, a really strong a candidate for these funds. Um, I will be this cons the um, representative to the CPA uh, committee who would be um, if the historical commission decides to recommend um, the grant proposal that I would be there to argue in favor of that. Um, things that make for a strong proposal are more than one estimate. Um, and then particularly with a building like this, um, using consultants who are specialized, like I, they, yeah. I think we decided that was a slate roof. So getting the appropriate um, specialized um, contractors. And again, uh, adhering to the Secretary of the Interior standards, um, those are specific rules that determine how all repairs can and can't be done. And um, the town of Amherst doesn't have anybody in a role to look over a contractor's scope of work and determine whether those standards are being enforced or not, but maybe that's something that will change, but it is, it would be an expectation that the work would be reviewed to make sure it was in line with those standards. There are a couple of other funds that you could also consider applying to in addition to CPA funds. The, Mass Preservation, Preservation Mass um, and the 7, 1772 Foundation have a matching program for uh, windows and exteriors. So that could, could be another, potentially another $10,000. And um, the Sacred Places organization, I know they're, they're a national organization and, and their grants are more competitive, but it might be worth um, taking a look at what they have to offer so that more uh, anywhere you can get more funds and especially if they look for matching funds the cpa funds could be used to match and and bring um more funds into your project and then i highly agree with with a phased um with getting a phased scope of work i would assume that the leaking roof would probably be the first um item to be to be yeah. tackled but um maybe doing a, a roof application and a windows application and then maybe an exterior repair application if there's nothing um if there's nothing structurally urgent. So um, very excited to see this project come before us. Thank you for thank you for presenting that. Yeah, thank you for having us. We appreciate this opportunity. Pat? Yes, th thank you for presenting this to us. And I, my thoughts when I raised my hand were, have been touched on in that it would be really important for you to prioritize the repair that's most critical and, and apply for that first and have the stages um, for, for the rest of the repairs. They all look critical, but, but there's, got to, yes. there's got to be a yes. degree yes. of critical and to present your case in that way that, you know, whether it's the roof, whether it's the rotting oh, windows, um, uh, to, to you talking to contractors and advisors okay. to, to make that decision. And then in the first year, apply for the repair that would be considered the most critical to the structure of the building. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, definitely preview the CPA committee that you will be applying in stages. So they already know that this is only a portion you know, of what's coming and they can see over, you can show them all the problems, but say that you're prioritizing this year, this problem, mm -hmm. and they know yeah. that there's much more and that way they don't feel like they're being asked to pay for everything they can see mm -hmm. it's only a small yeah. portion of what you yeah. have to deal with okay That's okay yeah any other comments for them i really underline what robin said definitely look at those other grant um, yes. opportunities once mm -hmm. you know i've found in my own self as, a, as an academic once you've written a grant proposal you have it all there you have the text you have your estimates you have your budget and it's easy to to plug it into other grants so this is the year to just go all out and find everyone you can and do it rather than waiting and then having to redo everything in another year and i can um forward an email after this meeting um with links to the resources that i'm aware of to, to thank help. you yeah. thank you sure and i'm sure meg and other people can help you with yes. those applications. yes yes Right, <laughs> we are counting little, on them. We'd like to help. We just need a little, we needed a little more advanced time this time, but yeah. now we have it, yeah. so that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I think that you have a sense from us. Oh, Hetty, you just put your hand up. Just, um, just a comment about um, my, my experience of the, the church is really through the restaurant um, and, and, and witnessing the community efforts that you have already been involved in to, to kind of make it a real meeting point um, in, the, in the area of North Amherst. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing and a great reuse of a historic building to have you all there. I'm really happy that you're pursuing a CPA grant. Um, good luck. Um, yeah. Prioritize what's most critical, you know, plan for a, a multi-year project. Um, there's a lot here that would intimidate a lot of people. Um, but the fact that you want to build here and grow your community um, mm -hmm. and want to stay where you are is going to be really um, the bedrock with which you then take it to the next levels. So, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Hattie. Well, I think you could tell from all the members that we're definitely in support of the project and we will do whatever we can um, to support it at the CP. Meeting. Now we have a lot of things that come in and we of course have to prioritize um, ourselves, but, but Robin will be our representative and after we've gone over all the proposals and looked at the amount of money that is available each year, it's different for mm -hmm. historical things because it's divided into pools, mm -hmm. uh, then we would go to them with our priority list and our amounts that we would ask them. So um, this, this helps and of course once you've actually made your proposal, we'll be looking at it and you'll probably come back to talk to us again, but this is just to help you get it, yes. get it going. Okay. But you definitely Thank have you. support from the community. Good, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming and, and previewing it for us. Good Thanks luck. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Okay. So second item on the agenda is West Cemetery signage. We've talked about this many times before. What are we at today? <laughs> um, well, this, this one's a little bit different because it's uh, we have funding for it from last year's CPA project um, or last year's CPA proposal. Uh, if you remember, we got $50,000 for the fence and the signage at West Cemetery. We uh, have a uh, contractor lined up to do the fence. Um, probably if, oh, there, yeah, probably maybe this fall, but potentially in the spring. Right. Um, but I, uh, that was kind of the priority to see, you know, what, how, how much the fence would cost and then see what's left to do uh, for signage. Um, and so the goal with the signage is to, um, we want to uh, place two signs, one on North Pleasant Street uh, near uh, the toy box to, to try to get people, you know, to let people know to, that they can go down that alleyway and access West Cemetery through there uh, for pedestrians, and then also to put a sign on Triangle Street uh, to mostly, maybe for more so that's car focused uh, mm -hmm. to let people know about West Cemetery there. Cause I think in both places, it's it's pretty easy just to drive by it and not, not really know or walk by and not really know. Um, so yeah, I guess I just, I'm totally open to different ideas. I think we'll probably work with uh, Seth Gregory again to uh, put together a, a sign within uh, pa the package for us. We have now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so my initial thoughts here, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Um, so, you know, West Cemetery, you can walk through there, and that's one of the main gates. Um, one thought I had was to just, ad, you know, ad, adhere a sign to this light pole. Our our DPW is pretty insistent that wherever we can, we don't 
uh, we, we reuse existing poles as much as possible and don't put too many additional poles in the ground. So I was, I thought, you know, it'd be good to put a sign in this area and considering there's already a light pole there probably, uh, makes sense to put it on that pole. So, um, maybe have it, um, say West cemetery, but then have an arrow to the right for pedestrians and an arrow straight ahead for cars. Right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Going. So they don't try to pull in the one way. Alley I know it would be confusing. Yeah. If you had West cemetery to the right here and then cars, and then there's also do not enter. So yeah, exactly. somehow make, make it clear that it's, you know, for, it's a pedestrian, mm -hmm. um, access. Um, and so I think this sign would probably be, you know, maybe similar, maybe like two, two by three kind of thing, like, you know, 24 mm -hmm. by 36 kind of sign. Mm -hmm. And had, whereas the, if you remember from last year, we had, we put two like more interpretive signs within the cemetery. Right. And th those had a lot of text and maps and a list of all the donors and all that. Yeah, I think this one, there. this one would be simple and just say West Cemetery, like established 1730 with an arrow uh, and maybe, maybe say National Register or something like that. Um, and then, yeah. so. You might, you might also say Emily Dickinson. Yeah. In case yeah. somebody, you know, if that's what they're looking for. Right. Um, and then, so going to Triangle Street now, um, this one is a little bit more challenging because there's, uh, you know, light, there's uh, electric poles to consider. Um, and so, one idea I had, and I was also talking to Alan Snow, who's our uh, tree warden, and uh, uh, he runs the grounds division. He's the one who, you know, him and his team are the ones mowing out here all the time. You know, his, he had a few ideas, but one thing he said to me was just, you know, that if, if we could avoid putting another pole in the ground here, that would be great because they're running their mowers up and down here all the time. Uh, it might be hard to avoid that, but you can't so, use the electrical pole, right? Because it doesn't belong to the town. Yeah, exactly. Um, so one idea that Alan and I had when we were walking out there was to put kind of like a low sign, like within this bed, mm -hmm. um, that just said West Cemetery. And you know, I don't think it even needs to. It could be more more like stone potentially, as opposed to just like a metal sign that sticks out of the ground um like the one we're doing at the corner for amherst college right yeah college and, and pleasant yeah yes yeah something like that um i think that would look nice potentially in this bed here of course it might not be visible for people coming this way necessarily but um maybe, maybe not could... have it on the corner have it along the outside of the wall Right, I like here. So you yeah. See it both directions. Are right. people allowed to turn in there with their cars? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah, never knew people... that. So that's where people park when they go there. Yeah, I mean, people drive in. Um, it's we obviously, you know, there's usually only ever like, you know, there, there's very few cars in there ever. But you know, I think it's important. To, well, one for maintenance, and two for if someone's, you know, mobility impaired, but still wants to visit the cemetery to be able to mm -hmm. drive in. Um, but theoretically, yeah. a visitor to town could just pull in there, drive all the way around and back out again, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a figure eight uh, road okay. system. So yeah, you can easily loop loop through. Okay. So Ben, what is that sign that I'm seeing to the left there? Yeah, you just flip past it. Back the other uh, way. This one? No, no keep the other way on the wall. It's this, behind the fence. Yeah, there's a green yeah. and white sign. Right oh, there, right. Yeah, red. this. Yeah, this is probably like ten years old or something. Yeah. Um, so could that be updated? I actually, I don't think it's, it's there. Going. I don't it's think it's there anymore. Yeah. Oh. Um, funded in part by the landscape grant program. Yeah, I think this is when they did the headstone restoration the first time around, maybe. Yeah, not since we've been doing it. 
Yeah. Those, those aren't the right names. I think that's gone. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. But could that be a place for a new sign designating the West Cemetery? Well, I wouldn't give you time to turn in if you were coming from right. the side. You wouldn't see it from the other direction. You'd only see it from no. this direction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can explore a few different options, uh, either putting like a, a sign in here or maybe something on the corner here that's visible from both directions. Um, and see, see just well one what I don't I don't really have a sense of what like a you know stone sign here would cost, but probably more definitely more expensive than a simple metal sign on a pole. But uh, could cost now what would be years. more uh, uh, more visible from both directions is take this little hedge out here, right, right there on the wall, just attach right. it to the wall, yeah. and then you can yeah. see it from both directions. Right. It's not like that hedge is terribly valuable no well can you just then can you just use the wall closer to the driveway like the other sign was um the wall closer to the driveway like like yeah like there's the wall like up here or yeah 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 you anyway. can't see that coming from the west though because oh head. okay yeah yeah so that's why it would have to be on the low wall that sticks out on the other side of the driveway. Yeah. The so you could see it from both directions. Or yeah. if you wanted something higher, put it where the hedge is. Yeah. 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 I mean, and it's not the end of the world if it's only visible from one direction. I mean, but I mean, the other uh, thing might be to take the it, there is a sign that says West Cemetery right on that that stone post. Yeah maybe just make that like etch that with black in the yeah in the, um letters so that it shows because this isn't as essential as the other one from the other side the walking access you know on the alley here it's more obvious you can see a cemetery you can't yeah. see it yeah yeah maybe yeah. if that were just a better preserved sign on there you wouldn't have to add anything yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, that can um, be done, you know, it can be darkened with a grout. It's pretty easy to miss that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I'll I'll bring back those options and, and uh, yeah. see what others think. But yeah, that's a good suggestion. Okay, well, bring us the proposal, proposed signs and what you want to do, and then we'll look at them maybe next meeting. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, CPA proposals from us next on the agenda. Anyone have anything to suggest, Robin, for CPA proposals? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, anybody else can come up with ideas too, but I know she's just chomping at the bit here. So, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I still haven't got like a framework around this, but here's what I'm thinking thus far. So, um, I looked at Springfield, uh, and actually, I should have, um, I should send out this link to um, the commission, but I looked at the Springfield Historic Preservation Fund that is funded by their CPA that is for repairs, the, the way that, all I know is that they use, they use CPA funds to fund a particular program. So their guidelines are up to $30,000. There's a very impressively complicated um, formula uh, so that you part, the part that's um, your award is related to your income and it's limited, in their case, it's limited to properties within local historic districts. Um, I think the most important thing to note is that they've done this, that it can be done, that you can take CPA funds and create a particular program for them. Um, and the other thing that I noted in their program is that they, the city engages a preservation consultant to review the scope of work and ensure uh, the Secretary of Interior Standards are adhered to. Um, is that part of the same funding? Is that one of the like initial expenses in the funding? 
or is it separate? Um, I think that's separate. I think the thirty thousand, the up to thirty thousand dollars, is for the repairs itself, and not the town. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't had a chance to inquire with them about how they fund things on the other side. I mean, it's it's just it's really, it's interesting and impressive, and it it um, lets us know that both uh, you can create a program that uses CPA funds. And um, this piece about, um, I'm really curious to um, get in touch with them to understand which, well, particularly which and how they engage a preservation consultant, because it seems like this is something as we begin to really encourage more applications to CPA in general, it would be great to talk to them about how they manage that because it's kind of necessary for all our, our projects. Everything. And yeah. as, we, as we get going along, that, that seems like something that should be standard. So then the question is, if we were to create a program uh, for, let's say for barns and outbuildings and just put a proposal before the CPA this year to say, uh, I don't know, request $25,000 for stabilization funds for barns and outbuildings. I mean, we'd have to develop guidelines for the program, but that would be kind of the general idea that we'd take $25,000. It would be in a fund for um, barns and outbuildings, you know, it could be for stabilization only or- Is this for the actual you know. work or for the investigation into what has to be done? Because you had originally- well, that yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I twenty five thousand like, isn't going to do even one barn. It's right. It's okay. Yeah, but it's so twenty. So, so I don't know what the dollar amount would be mm -hmm. to ask for from CPA to get enough seed money to get started, and whether it would just be. I don't think that if we took CPA money from that main budget, not the administrative budget, which is a limited amount anyway, but from the main budget, if we could fund feasibility studies. That's what, but, find out like what it would cost to do say five feasibility studies, right? And right, right. Maybe one stabilization or something. And I right. would at least double what you're asking for, at least 50,000 and well, say- what we're asking for. <laughs> so right. Go ahead, well, you're there. right in the proposal that we put forward. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually, since it'll be conflict of interest for you, I probably will have to present, right? Uh, well, no, you could pretend you well, didn't write it. You could present it. Um, uh, I mean, I'm not financially benefiting from it. That's so true. That's what, true. What so no, it makes it makes. Yeah, all yeah, the way right. through. Um, I don't know, but, but I have the time for it to be my baby all the way through. But, you know, that's kind of that the general idea. If it's seed money and we, we say that we're starting like a Friends of Amherst Barnes or something that we talked about, you know, that would continue fundraising and stuff and that we're looking elsewhere, it would look better to CPA than to say, we're only coming back to you every year to build our pot, right? Well, I mean, there, there are so many pieces flying, you know, and so many ideas in the air at once. And I'm trying to pick one thing that, you know, we could start. I don't, you know, to have, I, I don't have a crew for a friends of, I mean, I would personally like to call it friends of Amherst preservation. So it could be a broad swath, but mm -hmm. that's just, that's sort of like another commission goal. Mm -hmm. That might be something, but it doesn't exist yet. It's just an idea. Well, I don't know. I mean, if the application said we're asking for this money, but the idea behind it is that we branch out when we have a chance from here and start pulling people into this kind. You know, we don't have to actually say we have it all in place. Just say that this this is the kind of thing that's going to seed not just feasibility or stabilization, but it's going to seed our idea to create a friends group. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, I know what you're saying. I don't, you know, I don't know that I would pitch it that way, but I mean, the, 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 the main pitch is the money, right? So we need a dollar amount. Yeah. We need what it's for. And, yeah. you know, we could even say that it would be, you know, limited to barns and outbuildings on the inventory that Shannon Walsh of PVPC prepared for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And there you've got something and you can change it later, but there you've got like some nice defined parameters yeah i and mean there, the, the, there, is, there is there is precedent for the historical commission just getting due diligence funds for you know like soft costs related to 
uh, you know, architectural engineering and studies related, you know, that to, to use mostly in relation to demo delay projects, but I think. Right. Um, but doesn't that come out of like the administrative line item and not the standard PPA we, or project we budget? Lot, we no, it, it, it comes out of the historic preservation okay. um, section, yeah. Okay. I think there's like been, there, I think maybe more recently, there's been some questions raised whether, I think, yeah, like there's questions raised whether the strong house could get money for engineering study last year and they ended up, right. they did, they did get that. But right. um, I think if we put parameters on it, that, like you said, it would only be used for, you know, buildings on the inventory deemed, you know, historic by the commission and, um, I think if it's, yeah, it's one, if it's for soft costs, I think that's simpler, but it, as soon as you, it's anything construction related that gets more complicated. Uh, well, that's true. I yeah. mean, if we made a soft projects program that we could, you know, dangle in front of, you know, either through like, well, I wouldn't say either, I would say both through a mailing to that list since those are eligible properties. Yeah, and then um, to anybody who comes, you know, before us with a demolition request, and then encourage um, and advise them about putting in their own CPA application for the right. Action. Exactly, we could say, you know, we don't want you to tear down this property. Um, here's money to fund, you know, and here's you know a list of resources for people to contact to fund a feasibility study about you know stabilizing and preserving it, and they could apply for those funds or could be granted those funds and then you're right then that would the next logical step you're right would just be to have encourage them to come back for a regular cpa grant with that feasibility study in hand you'll have costs and you'll have an idea of a scope of work and it would be much you know easier to go forward from there great okay let's do it Any okay comments for robin oh i'm i'm very supportive of the idea great so well, thank you robin. wants to help her with it <laughs> you, can all, you can all call her up. We'll definitely look at, you know, whatever you draft out and help. I mean, okay. I'll sit down with you, whatever, whoever. So okay. yeah, and you can just describe you can just describe how the you know the commission over the years has faced these uh been faced with the demolition of these barns that are just beyond repair and the Owners or in some don't. cases aren't, yeah. and the owners yeah. don't want to, yeah, right, right. either yeah. way, right. Yeah, so it's yeah. either demolition by neglect or de demolition by unlove, right? And yeah, people, right, right. By, just don't want it, yeah. yeah. So, okay, great. I'm sure okay. you can do a great narrative to make it compelling. We can help. Okay. Thank you. I'll give it Anybody a first pass. So that, and my deadline, so the deadline for that, it would be... September, what is it? 30th? Um, yeah, my understanding is the application opens on the 1st of September and closes okay. on the 30th. Okay. So we can tweak it if necessary. Okay. Meeting maybe, and then okay. it's ready to go in. Or, or you could send it to Ben and he could forward it to us individually and we could make comment if you want to turn around faster than ready. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's well, what I saying. know is it's not getting started before. September 1st. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm uh, trying to okay. being like, just do it tomorrow. Right. So if by our next meeting you had something, you know, pretty well. Yeah, out. that would be the goal okay. to start it on September 1st and have a draft for our meeting and then submit it on right. the 30th. That'd be great. Got it. Anybody have any other things they think we should propose to CPA? How's it? Where are we in the cemetery? Are we at the third year? We have all the money now, right? Yeah, we yeah yeah, um, okay. and then the the restoration the headstone restoration project uh, came in well under budget, so we have a hundred thousand total, and this latest round um, has only costed about forty thousand total, and their uh, their work their their final step for us is going to be just create an assessment of like what the next round of repairs would include and so then that money will stay in the in the budget for the the funding will remain but there have we have to put out another bid don't we to use them again is that what happened last year yep yeah um 
We want them yeah. to continue. We can't just say, okay, come back and use the rest of it. Yeah, no, we'd have to put out another bid and advertise it to three companies and, um, and uh, yeah, but that, yeah, so. But we, could. but we could, I mean, we could finish it off with them next year without applying for more money. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Super. Well, that's nice. How often yeah. does that happen? I know, yeah. And then maybe it's on to South Amherst Cemetery, who knows? Yeah, who knows? I was yeah. thinking, <laughs> but let's let's maybe just put all our eggs in, in Robin's basket this year and then yeah. we can think about the South Cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> little little yeah. blue eggs in Robin's basket. Yeah, Robin. <laughs> I've got them, I've got them right out here in the penthouse. <laughs> I can give them to you, nice little blue ones. <laughs> okay, great um then we're all agreed on that we don't need to vote does everybody just feel everybody looks yep. happy okay great super um rules and regs i assume you all read the a document ben i think this is going to take a while to do but yeah um, no this is just an introduction yeah, yeah yeah um yeah so basically obviously i've only been in this role for just over two years now i don't know i don't know if these rules and regulations were ever formally adopted or what they are i just found them on, on our network drive and on they, our, on my... they have been in the background for us all yeah. along we occasionally looked at them but okay. we never felt like it was important to okay I mean, but we've always talked about once the bylaw was passed, we would update them. Yeah, Definitely. I know, because it's, I mean, it's called draft. It has the draft thing on it. So I yeah, wasn't well, sure yeah. it's from. We must live in perpetual <laughs> draft condition. So, so we need this rules and regulations, even though we have had the new bylaw developed. It's completely and separate and, from the bylaw. It, it yeah. supports it. Is that yeah. what it does? But yeah. It's a separate thing. But you'll yeah. notice it's 2017. I mean, we did do some updating. You know, but there's a lot more to do with the new well bylaw. now with the new bylaw it's changed and what i would like to suggest yeah. if you have time ben is you take this and you take the new bylaw and you just go through and make them match yeah right? i mean um, yeah it's I not mean, bad there's... it's not bad it's just like it doesn't have the significance and preferably preserved kind of yeah level, you know but there... There's language that has to be changed, but I agree with you, Janet. It didn't seem significant to me. It, it seems like it tracks. Yeah, I, and I think that with a little bit of editing, um, it can fit the new bylaw and the procedures that we follow. Um, yeah, I love. Yeah, so basically, the ever. the rules and regs like kind of fill in the gaps of the bylaw and talk about some right. of the more internal procedures. Uh, Right. And so one thing, the reason I want to do this is, as well is um, there's been a few members of the public and some town council members who have uh, reached out to me and colleagues in the planning department just about the, the whole designee process. Mm -hmm. And, right. um, you know, we haven't really had our first example yet, but uh, there's just some concern about um, the, that process that determination of significance happening, um, you know, outside of a public meeting necessarily. And- Yeah, but on the procedures, it wouldn't necessarily note that it was you. It would still just say a designee because we could change that at any time. So we don't want it set in stone on the procedures. No, yeah, that's not what I was saying. I, I'm, I'm just saying that uh, the, 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 I'm trying to think there there's the rules and regulations could spell out a way a procedure for um if for notifying members of the public mm -hmm. somehow about like a pending yeah, application okay. yeah um so you know once an application is submitted and you know uh, the designee has 14 days to make a determination whether it's significance there could be during that 14 day window there could be some way in which uh, the public is notified and they're able to weigh in on whether a building is significant. Um, and I think, you know, that I think there's real value to that too. I think there's been a few examples where I send out a butters note in the previous bylaw, I would send out a butters notices and then a neighbor would email me saying like, oh, like, 
I bet you didn't know this about this building or, you know, I've lived here right. for, you know, decades and let me tell you a little bit, bit about the history of the building. And um, it, it often is really helpful because there's things I can't find out from research, at, you know, on my own. So um, I think, you know, it's just, a, it's just finding a way, finding that balance between the goals of the bylaw, which are to kind of streamline the process mm -hmm. a little bit, but also to give time for input. So, um, you know, we've had a few different ideas, uh, and, you know, I think I can explore some of those in the rules and regulations. One of them is, you know, literally posting a physical sign outside of a building, uh, big, mm -hmm. you know, I think Northampton does that often yeah, a lot of when, 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 when they have yep. like a pending hearing, just like, you know, something that catches the eye and it's out front in the sidewalk and says, you know, this it is, building is... You couldn't just say demolition permit uh, yeah. application in because people would think the whole thing was coming down. It would have to be pretty specific. Right. Oh, they yeah, are just... pretty specific, aren't they? I mean, the ones that I've seen are have a lot yeah. of language on them, but they catch your yeah. eye. I mean, I yeah. think it's oh, a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was either something like that or, you know, in, in addition to that, maybe... Um, could create like an I think we talked about this maybe one of our last meetings like creating an email list of the town of like just people who are interested in Amherst history and want to be notified of a application that wouldn't necessarily target geographically but it would just be town wide whoever wants to join this email list Jen, um, can, it like just be, oh. can you just can it just be I mean I get the um text push messages for like everything mm -hmm. yeah could it just be added to that i mean that's sort of you know i mean i like that because it's a text you know if i don't yeah need to pay attention to it i don't pay attention to it but um you know it's it's really then it would be one less thing to manage it would just go to anybody who's on that yeah list. maybe i i i would be hesitant to because that's also for like emergencies and yeah, all, it gets you know, many things. I I would be hesitant to say, oh, like the building at you know one twenty Pine Street's up for demolition. Let's tell the the entire town. <laughs> yeah, but, um, no, I think I think that could be overused. That that. But notion. something similar to that, I think. Um, I mean, you know, it's just. I mean, it's like it's also just a meeting announcement thing. Right? Yeah. I mean, would yeah, exactly. just be like a you know, there's a, going to be a hearing for or you know consideration you don't want everybody to know <laughs> i mean i think the sign is good for people who live in the neighborhood and the emails yeah. for people who it may be a place that nobody ever drives down that street so they wouldn't see yeah. it if they're interested in historic buildings so you could catch them both with the sign and an email list yeah yeah exactly so um and so yeah there's I think that that's the kind of stuff that would go into the rules and regulations as opposed to the bylaw itself, because it, it's more of right. like the internal happenings of the historical commission and how you guys want to manage the process. So um, just put your proposal together. And yeah. On it. Yeah. Yeah. That There's good. probably some kind of packet that could be given to new members that would include something like this and Amos preservation plan, maybe you know, a sample of a form B, you know, some of the kind of yeah to go for people who are new to town or new to serving on a commission or a committee, you know, I think it would be great. Um, yeah, there was a binder once given out. Right. But in historical times. You know, before COVID, I'm sure it happened because there was a sort of handing over of you know, the keys to the kingdom kind of a thing, but you know, <laughs> um, yeah, that would be great. Okay, well, Ben, um, come back with what you think it should be and we'll, we'll work on it. Um, I okay. know this is a problematic area and the sooner we iron it out and get it down, I think it'll make your life easier. Yeah. Um, a little less worry, so. Okay, uh, do we have anybody yet? Who's willing to serve as the design review board representative? Becky, you were going to think I about it. it. I, I said I would do it. Oh, you will? You made the, okay, because you were going to come back and tell us at this meeting. Yes. Okay. Yes. I Yay. double checked with Ben. I was mostly concerned about the number of meetings and the time commitment. Oh. Yeah, it's um, not, it's not major. It seems kind of minimal. 
so I give it a go. Um, Oops. There, there's going to be a meeting August 17th at five o'clock. Yeah, so how do I, well, I guess what I would say is how would I, I know there's some stuff on, on the website about the committee and stuff I see, but yeah. how do I plug in them. I will send uh, a message to Maureen, who's the rep, like Ben from the town, and she will put you on the list and get in touch with you. And also, when I, well, not when I joined, but at some point, there was a handbook, and I gave it to Catherine, who apparently moved with it. She didn't try to give it back to any of us, so it's gone. But there is um, stuff on the web, though. I did kind of take a quick look. So, yeah, you can look at most of the stuff on there and you can look at minutes if they're keeping their minutes up so you can see what yeah, they're doing. Yeah. Um, and there are criteria, kind of like, and not as fancy as ours, but there are some things to consider. So, um, and, and Maureen can give you some of that. So I'll send her an email saying that you'll be our rep. Um, it, for the time being, if you decide you hate it or whatever, we are getting one or two new members. So, you know, but try it. Do I think you'll like it. Hmm? Do we have new members like in line? Yeah, an announcement, so I'll tell about that. Oh, okay. Um, so I guess the other question, because I've not been a representative of another uh, commission, is what what is my role? Is it just advising um, on the start? For the board, or... the design review board? Yeah. You represent us. Uh, you did you did deliberate with everybody else about whatever right. it is, and you're you're an evil e equal partner with everybody oh, else. Okay. There's a rep from planning board. There's like one architect, one this, one that. I mean, there, there's designated positions, um, but everybody's equal. But you just keep in mind historical condition, right, historical right. condition issues, right? Um, and that's where you can speak most strongly. And you can say, as the representative of the historical commission, you know, I really want to say that this can't happen or whatever, or right. this would right. be better than that or something like that. Um, but a lot of the stuff doesn't really relate to that, what you end up doing. So, you know, would you quit? Yeah. Um, and I, I will say, Jan, um, Maureen's out, I think, on vacation the rest of this week and next week. So, oh, okay. um, but uh, I will, I, I think I need to tell Paul, the town manager, because he maintains all the lists. So I'll, I'll mm -hmm. tell Paul that Becky's been nominated to the DRB and then um I guess Becky just keep I think just add to your calendar hopefully if you're able to go the next meeting I think like Jan said is August 7 17th at five o'clock yeah. and, yeah. and so uh Maureen will definitely be back you know well before then and can uh, get you the zoom link and I think the the mm -hmm. materials are on the website already for that meeting yeah. I think it's yeah. uh the Amherst Oyster Bar and a few other things downtown. So, yeah, I'm sorry I had to step away. Do you need my support for Becky's um, no. appointment? She, she no, agrees. okay, no, good. Um, I support it. Okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, if you, then rather than my telling Maureen, Ben, if you'll tell Paul, and then yeah. Paul will let Maureen know that it's a, a, a done deal. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I I had said that I I told Maureen I'd come if nobody else was going to be there because we haven't had a rep for a few months you know I thought we better have somebody there so this is great because I'm I'm really pressed right now for stuff so this is fabulous Becky thank you right yeah it will be honestly I learned a lot and you get to know every new restaurant that comes to town which is they roll <laughs> around a lot you know and what's happening with that oyster bar anyway we'll find <laughs> out we'll be asking you okay do we have any public members who want to comment there aren't any comment? attendees hmm? there aren't any attendees anymore okay okay announcements we did have some interviews and there was one person who applied to the historical commission who is a preservation specialist, historic preservation hmm. specialist. Wow. And um, we agreed. And so she is now um, presented to the council as a possibility and then they have to vote. And once they do, Paul can appoint her. 
So their meeting is sometime this month, really soon. On Monday, yeah. Yeah. And then once they approve, then she would be invited to our September meeting. So, and I'll tell you all about it when I introduce her. And then another person, I've been sending out loads of emails. I think I've sent out 15 now asking people to consider joining, likely people, mostly academics in you know, architecture and art history and things like that that should be relevant, history, landscape. Um, and I had one person bite who actually is in none of those, but it's really hard to find faculty who live in town. So that's the, the criteria that always gets me. But I have somebody who's um, uh, a, a faculty member at Holyoke who said she was going to turn in the citizen interest form. And I haven't heard from Paul about that. We were gonna go ahead and interview her if it came in, but Ben, did you ever notice whether um, that, it, that came through? Um, I don't have access to the like, in inbox of the activity forms. Um, I did just get an email from Angela Mills letting me know that they want to schedule more interviews next week. Okay. So that indicate that would indicate to me probably yes. Um, and historical commission is on that list. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It must be. Okay. Great. Yeah. Maybe some others too. But we yeah. we need at least two, and then of course by the end of the year we'll need another. So everybody should keep beating the bushes. Um, but this new person if she has time she would be a real asset and you know maybe able to to lead mm -hmm. some of these things robin i know robin's concerned about that um any announcements from you ben um uh not at this time no okay um, great any unanticipated items anybody wants to bring up <laughs> Nope. Do we have a meeting date? I believe we do for September. We picked uh, the 15th, September 15th. Ben, what, what was the, I'm assuming we're all meeting remotely again. What was decided? Oh yeah. About that remote question. meeting. Cause I, yeah. I mean, because we're meeting remotely, I guess it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was extended by the governor's order. Till when? And how long was, yeah. Uh, this time around, I honestly don't even remember. It was at least a year, I think. Oh, okay. great. Okay. I never yeah. have to conduct a meeting in person. <laughs> no, actually, I like them, but I know it's hard to get Yeah. Them. Yeah. It's, um, it's tough with, um, with, with uh, guests presenting to yeah. orchestrate coming to town hall. I mean, I'm open to an in-person meeting if we ever don't have guests coming but um i know the in the september meeting the architects from the jones library are, are planning to uh present and we don't want to make them drive all the way to, from boston for that so yeah um and that yeah that'll be a good meeting that's uh kind of the opportunity to preview um the uh J the jones library project and to provide some feedback they're kind of at a good point now because they're just finishing schema oh, what's it called schematic design and now they're moving on to like refining and de developing the design further so um yeah i'll make sure to get you all those drawings and materials well in advance everything we can see in advance shortens the meeting yeah and i think i know i, I saw the initial package and it's like hundreds of pages long and i was going to suggest to them like you guys don't need to see the like fire sprinklers plan and the like all no, that stuff just they should really create focus. a little yeah. Yeah. focus point it's, for it's, us. It's a floor plan for community use. It's more yeah. critical for us, I think, to review. Yeah, it's the floor plan and the like, kind of exterior. Um, right. Things that affect our yeah. purview, which is yeah. our, our, our interests, right? Yeah. Um, but Thursday, the 15th of September is what I have on my calendar. That's what I just said, yeah. Correct. Okay, yep. great. Yep. And Ben, be sure you tell them we don't need them to do a long introduction repeating everything we've just read. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These these long. I mean, it was great that the the, the Korean Church came, but we, we just need to emphasize succinct to the point. You know. <laughs> so okay. To the point. 
So yeah. this report, Ben, is there is there a, a executive summary to it? Well, so that's not, so that we don't out. have to wade through all the hundreds of pages to find what what our purview is. Um. So I'll, I I can describe over the email, I guess, what your purview is. I don't know if they have a written like summary of the entire project at this point, but uh, at the very least, I can look at it myself and kind of reference the page numbers that are important for you all to look at um, and just delete the pages that are not relevant, yeah. like, like all the utilities and stuff like that. If, if you have the time, Ben, that would yeah. save save this well, committee. Well, they could too. I mean, this is part of what they're being paid to do. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, exactly. that, that's why I was asking for the ex executive summary or what I'm not sure what you call it in architectural yeah. report. But. Yeah. Okay, so we have a meeting date. Uh, we don't have anything else. So anybody want to move to adjourn? I move, I move that we adjourn. We adjourn. One I hour think we have an echo. Minutes. I second if I didn't first. <laughs> Everybody seconded it. Okay. Anybody want to vote? We can do it by a show of hands. Everybody ready to adjourn? Okay. That was easy. Thank you, Jen. Great. Thank you, Ben. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. And thank you all. Thank, everybody. Thank, thank you, Ben. Bye. Take awesome. Care. Take care, thank everyone. You. Thank you all. Bye-bye.